Okay, so I wanted to uh, kind of make a video to show the man cave and uh, my diecast collection. So when I bought this uh, this house, one of the things that really excited me was this basement. Uh, and I've got it pretty well where I want it. There's a few more things I want to do, put a new ceiling in at some point and do a little more with those windows and get some new lighting down here. But I've got it at least functional now, so I thought after I pan around a little bit here, I will uh, kind of give a little bit of a tour and kind of document my diecast collection. So the man cave uh, the basement is uh, kind of a multifunction area. Got a little sitting area set up here uh, where we can watch TV or play video games or, or whatever we want to do. And, um, and then there's a, a little bit of a hobby area here for... Uh, building models. My son and I are both into building models, so we got a little area set up to be able to work on those. And then we've got a little bit of an exercise area set up over here with kind of a generic bow flex, a little bit of exercise equipment. And then over here we've got uh, what I would call mostly kind of a music area uh, set up. And then also have a little bit of a workshop kind of deal down here where uh, we've got some storage and a workbench where I just uh, painted a body of a model I'm working on. So it kind of works out good. Of course, utilities and everything are down here. So i uh, kind of really liking the man cave setup we've got going on down here. So uh, for years, I've been into collecting racing die cast. Um, my collection has kind of grown and shrunk over the years, and as I got settled into this new place, I had to downsize it a bit, but what I've got left is, is the stuff that I really like, so I'll take a few minutes and kind of go through it, uh, talk about what the different little mini collections are. So we'll kind of start over here. Uh, <clears throat> the previous owner had put this kind of built-in display case in place, so I've kind of used this to show off some of my Marines collectibles. Uh, I've got some challenge coins and some special Marines die cast pieces that were done. Collector Stein Ertl did these uh, these old trucks with the Marines kind of theme to them. Uh, as far as I know, they just did these three. Uh, but I really kind of like those. Um, and then I put together a little bit of a see this okay patriotic uh, collection uh, about as many of the smaller 164th muscle machines that they did in the paint flag uh, flag paint schemes and then other miscellaneous Hot Wheels and Johnny Lightning and stuff and then I kind of continue that down here with kind of patriotic and armed forces themed stuff um, stuff that uh, commemorated the Olympics and uh, after 9-11, some of the race teams did some real nice patriotic paint schemes. And then in, in 91, and then again in 2000, at the Daytona 500, they ran some Special Armed Forces paint schemes. I've got uh, those two sets. And then just other kind of miscellaneous uh, Armed Forces themed uh, die cast. These, uh, these Hot Wheels drag buses they did in the different uh, Armed Forces themes were pretty nice, so I've kind of put that collection together. And then some other 164th stuff. Um, kind of always like these uh, Team Convoy sets Matchbox did back in the 90s, so I put together uh, some of my favorites of those and just other miscellaneous uh, items. Kind of happy that I had the opportunity to meet Mario Andretti and get his autograph, so I've got that displayed. And then uh, here are nine of the 12 Legends of Racing 143rd cars that were done. Um, I've got nine of them here, two more in another spot, and I just got to get one more to get the complete set. Uh, kind of a fan of the old El Caminos, so I've got a little El Camino collection here that I've put together over the years. Uh, a couple of autographs from drivers that drove the Team Marines car. Got those on display. Over here is a collection of 118th muscle cars that I really like. 
I won't go through each one individually, but this is a collection that my older brother put together and, uh, and gave to me when he was downsizing. Uh, really, really enjoy these cars. Uh, and then up here, small collection of 118th stock rods and uh, trucks that, uh, that I really like, so I kind of kept those in the collection. Um, in 98, Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Jr. both ran an exhibition race NASCAR did in Japan, and they ran with Coca-Cola paint schemes. So a little collection I've put together of those, kind of a father and son thing uh, that kind of grabbed me, and, and I grabbed up a handful of collectibles that they did in those paint schemes. Uh, a little Budweiser collection here. Uh, you can go nuts collecting Budweiser stuff, but I've just kind of put together a few of my favorites. Uh, the Kenny Schrader stuff, his dirt late model, and, and Hendrick car, and then uh, some of my favorite junior cars. Uh, got the Bill Elliott, and, and then I was a big Red Dog fan when that was out, so I added that to the collection. Uh, and then uh, here's just a just a handful of cars, uh, Mustangs, and a and a Chevelle I did with the Marines decals. So there's kind of miscellaneous stuff there. Uh, this collection up here on this kind of mantle area is all Marines racing stuff, uh, various uh, paint schemes that were run with the Marine sponsorship that uh, I put together somewhere. Uh, manufactured die cast, a couple of them are models that I, that I put together that they never did in, in die cast. Uh, Marines haulers, hopefully you can see these with the reflection here. It's about as complete a collection of Marines racing collectibles that I've been able to put together. Um, and then some 118s here. This Mickey Thompson uh, funny car, one of my favorite pieces. This was never done in die cast, but Slicks did the decals and I bought the model kit and, and put that together. Custom 118 stock rod I did there, and then this is a collection I'm in the process of finishing. It's the the 124th versions of all the Armed Forces <coughs> tribute cars they did at the 2000 Daytona 500, and then I've got uh, started on doing the models for the corresponding cars they did in the 91 500. There's Kowicki's number seven, and over here I've got Buddy Baker's uh, number 88 Marines, and I'm in the middle of the Air Force car, and then I'll have the two left to do. So once I've got that done, I'll display those uh, as, a, as a small collection. Uh, here are some Armed Forces drag racing stuff, uh, other than Marines, that that, uh, that I kind of really like. So just a small Armed Forces drag racing collection I've put together there. Uh, this is the uh, set that Napa did. Uh, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of NASCAR. They did decades of racing, one car from each of the decades, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And then that uh, collection's kind of got me interested in some of these older style race cars. You know, today's race cars all look about the same. And back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even into the 80s, the cars had a little more personality to them. So I started to, to add you know, more interesting older cars in various scales that I've been able to find. Um, and that seems to be what I'm the most interested in, in adding to the collection now are these older cars. So I'll be continuing to pick those up uh, as, I, as I get an opportunity. Uh, this is just a kind of a collection of various styles of race cars. I'm going to kind of combine these uh, eventually and create a bit of a cr chronological collection of different styles and types of race cars that were run, no particular driver preference or sponsor preference or anything, but just uh, as complete a collection of different styles of cars that have been run over the years as I can find. Being from Ohio and being a dirt track race fan, it makes me a Blaney fan, both Dave and Dale, so this is a little collection of the cars that Dave has run in NASCAR over the years. Got them represented in my dirt collection as well. So that brings me over to the dirt collection. Um, big sprint car fan, uh, both uh, national and local. So 
here I've put together a little bit of a Steve Kinzer collection. If you're a dirt fan, you've got to love Steve Kinzer, king of the dirt. So not a complete collection by any means, but just a nice variety of the cars he's run. Uh, again, if you're a dirt race fan, you've got to love Freddie Raymer. So I've got a collection of his there. And then various uh, 118ths, um, some more Kinzer there, Brad Doty. Of course, you got to love Brad Doty and different event cars that, that I kind of liked. I found. Uh, this is uh, Sammy Swindell collection. About as many 118s as I could find there with one uh, Bobby Allen stuck in there. But, uh, and then over here we've got uh, Jack Hoddenshield. I gotta love the wild child. And then the two 118s they did of the Blaney brothers, uh, Dale and Dave. And then a couple more event cars. A little Danny Lasoski collection here. Uh, the Blaney's, and then uh, some more just uh, specialty event cars, and uh, Donnie Schott's car, he's a particularly uh, talented driver, so I wanted to add him at least in some way, shape, or form. These are kind of unique cars for the most part, except for the 2L there, none of these cars were ever done. These are local racers uh, that uh, uh, a buddy of mine has raced against over the years, so just guys that we've enjoyed watching racing at the local level. So these are cars I did custom, um, did the decals on my computer and painted up the cars and basically did replicas of these local guys that we like to watch race. These are all uh, my buddy's race team. Uh, we did some custom stuff uh, of the Kekish racing team. Uh, and then over here we get into some more dirt stuff. Again, not as much as I used to have, but uh, some of my favorite pieces. Some, uh, some late models of my favorite drivers. Uh, custom dirt stock car of a, a buddy of mine's daughter. And then uh, these are kind of interesting. If you're into die cast, you might recognize these two late models. The World of Outlaws late model they did when uh, the World of Outlaws series changed hands there. And then they did an uh, Eldora 50th anniversary liked both of these cars so much that kind of decided to add to that those themes so I did a custom uh, sprint car to match the late model for both of the World of Outlaw series and the old pit wagon that kind of ties them together and then did a e-mod of the uh, with the paint scheme same paint scheme as the uh, late model uh, for Eldoria's 50th uh, anniversary Brett Hearn, uh, Dirt Late Modified. Of course, he's about the most famous uh, modified driver there is. Got my hands on a 1 16th uh, replica as his car. And then other just various uh, dirt cars. Got a, another Brett Hearn Modified, an E-Mod down there. Uh, got some of the USAC styles represented here. Wingless Sprint, Silver Crown, and a couple of midgets. Uh, and then some of the older, a couple of the older style sprint cars uh, shown here. And then this is a really neat collection. Again, I won't go through it, but another collection my brother put together of uh, some of the original action sprint cars, some pretty neat drivers in this collection. It looks like I can't turn it, so we won't be able to show all those. I'll have to get that away from the wall. <coughs> And then down here is just a couple of model uh, model kits that I put together. And then uh, this is what I call the Milk and Cookies collection. Um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. did these uh, for the Daytona uh, races one year, did this Oreo collection with the milk all kind of splashing up. And then the following year he did it again with the, uh, with the Oreo and Nilla theme. And then uh, Terry Labonte did a Got Milk with Kellogg's. And anyway, I kind of thought those all went pretty well together. So, little collection there. This is just uh, what's left of a fairly large oil company collection that I had put together, just different cars sponsored by different oil companies. I spent a number of years in the lubrication industry for work and had a really large collection and just kind of dwindled it down to a very few of my particularly favorite ones. Uh, continuing with the dirt theme, uh, another collection my brother put together and I was able to, he was nice enough to give it to me uh, when he downsized, but this is just about every 
dirt sprint car race teams haulers that were ever done. Uh, Racing Champions did a bunch of them, and they included the car. And then uh, back in the day, Ertl did uh, a bunch of them. And it's about as co complete a collection as I can put together. To my knowledge, it's it's pretty much every hauler that was ever done for a sprint car uh, race team, the Ertls, the Racing Champions, and then a few that GMP did. I'm a big fan of the Miller Brewing Company, so this is a uh, bit of a collection of Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Lite collectibles that were done for Rusty Wallace and then uh, some of the Indy and, and uh, drag racing stuff that was done and corresponding haulers for him. Uh, and then these are just pictures of the of my buddy's race team, Kekich Racing, through the years. Uh, different cars and paint schemes over the last number of years there. Uh, and then over here in the music area, I've uh, managed to work some race cars into the music area. My wife's a big Aerosmith fan, so Kenny Wallace did a Aerosmith paint scheme, so we added that. She's also a big Disturbed fan, uh, and there was a Disturbed car that was a uh, pro stock that was raised, so we put that together with uh, some autographs she got from the band, uh, more band autographs, and then, then I play in a small local band. So some posters and pictures, uh, and then I did uh, uh, a race car with our band's colors and graphics and logo on it, just because I'm kind of a freak. And then uh, when I was in the military, uh, some commemorative stuff from my musical experiences there. And that, uh, that's pretty much the nickel tour. So I guess I'll wrap this up. Thanks for watching.